Hello everybody, this is Jeff Berlin. This video is going to be a simple uh, uh, practice concept for everybody. It's going to be about five lines that I wrote out in a C scale. People may know that I'm not entirely, not entirely, of course in part, entirely a huge fan of scales because scales tend not to define tonality and often are not really good for using when one solos. I know there's a stigma about using a scale when you play. It's kind of like using a verb when you talk as a deliberate use of a verb. It doesn't quite apply. So what I did is I took a C scale and I arranged them intervallically, which gives everybody a little more of a challenge, a string crossing uh, experience, but based in melodic and harmonic reasons to do it. You know how I feel about string crossings, that uh, the best way to do them is if there's a melodic and musical reason to, to cross the, the bass neck. So here are five uh, examples that I will play in succession of a C scale based on intervallic interpretation of those notes. Here's version one. Version 2. Resolution. Version 3. Resolution again. Version 4. And version five. I'm going to fix my mistake. Because if I make a mistake, I want to fix it and practice it so that I can learn it. As you know, I leave my mistakes in my videos. So give an example of how you can fix your mistakes. This was a demonstration of five uses of a scale. Now check this out, folks. If you take these five scales ascending and continue to ascend, that's a lot of full neck work based on harmonic reasons. If you take each scale and do them in 12 keys, you've got 60 different exercises here to do. Now check this out. If you take each one of these lines and play it in C major, C minor, or minor 7 I'll say, C major 7, C minor 7, C dominant 7, C minor 7 flat 5, and C diminished. Those are the five basic chord types. You will take 60 scales, that's these five scales done in 12 keys, so 5 times 12 is 60, times 5 different chord types. So if I may, I'll just show this to you, and I believe we'll be putting this on, on camera, uh, on, on the video. You've got essentially 300 possibilities to practice. Now, I don't expect everyone to do 300 versions, but the lesson that this will give you is to practice something that makes us better bass players. It is not applicable to a gig. I've said this in other videos. I feel it's important to repeat, you know. It's not applicable to a gig. You don't practice to play what you practice on a gig because what you're practicing is meant to teach us music and how to navigate the bass. That's what practicing is best done for. Occasionally you have a gig, you have to learn the music, but the idea is to leave the difficulties of bass playing that may arise on a gig, leave them in a practice room. So if you play these exercises in different places and different keys on the neck, you are going to have no problem playing any style of music that gives you pleasure and makes you happy that you're a musician. So practice these exercises. 
please do not use a metronome. You are not performing. Learning and performing are different. They don't relate. Learning is about regarding new information, and it's best done slowly. Playing or performing is about instantaneously reproducing what you've already learned and doing it in time. They don't relate the two concepts. So kindly avoid the metronome and play and fix your mistakes. Oh, that was a mistake. What did I do wrong? Oh, okay. Boy, am I glad I'm doing this slowly. Am I glad I'm doing this slowly? Oh, that's a mistake too. You see, I need the time to fix it. I make mistakes all the time when I learn new music. I, I guarantee you, I've never had an experience where I learned something new and didn't make mistakes at it. Um, where we do share a very common, uh, united background in this reality. I am no different than you. The difference might be between us is that I've gone through way more of this material to help raise me up so that I generally tend to play less mistakes or have an easier time in my performance life. But that's your future if you decide to learn and separate performance from learning. You do that and you'll get great in two topics, not just one. Performance for me does not belong in academic learning because it's, performance is a result, not a, a, an academic pursuit. In my opinion, sharing a thought and hopefully uh, it makes sense to you or however you, you know, decide uh, on what I just shared with you. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here and tune in again. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for new content weekly.